this puny. What are you talking about puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guess it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which points where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Mateys ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes. It's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. 
And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. and flows down into the drain trap, and after that it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. See my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa! What is it? An eco-tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. To grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. 
But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look, this one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. <laughs> Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we ugh, test these apples ourselves? Ugh. Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. Mmm. <gasps> Elisa, don't eat that. Elisa, <laughs> Elisa, oh. Elisa, stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, oh Elisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? This is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me! I poisoned someone! Yes! With an apple! Fire! I mean, poison! Oh! Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> Please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out.